What's up guys, what's going on? So we are back at uh, San Pedrito, I believe it is. We're back by Brendan McKeon's house here in Costa Rica and I'm gonna do a little follow up on this mandala garden that we showed you all last time. Um, a lot of the vegetables he was growing before has transitioned and they have something new and exciting to show you guys, so hold tight. Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Dan here, another part of Finca La Familia, and we're here to show you around our garden today. We've been working in this garden since last September. If you've seen any of Pete's videos, you saw us in October, I believe, November. We were just getting started. We now have made it through one dry season. We've got lots of successes so far, lots of failures, and we want to show you around. Um, a lot of all the things we did plant, we planted this really, really awesome seed. Got about 10 months ago in July and well we're gonna bring that seed into the video right now so I'm gonna introduce you to my wife Jessica and this is our baby Tyson Hello. me Tyson newest member to Finca La Familia Tyson was one of our successes that we made when we planted in the so-called garden and <laughs> he's growing quickly and also is uh, gonna be one of the main eaters out of what we're growing all here today so let's go We had some problems with not pest seeding my leaves on sweet potatoes, but birds. So I replanted over here, two lines of sweet potatoes, purple and orange, going great. Got squash planted over there in six different hills. We'll walk over in that direction. Edible cranberry hibiscus leaves, always crowd pleaser. Great for smoothies and salads. Now here at this farm, we deal with a lot of rain and we don't have a roof on this garden yet. So that's our biggest contender now. Right now we found a lot of success with these little cherry tomatoes. I got these from another local organic farmer. All these plants right here that are bustling came from one little cherry tomato, smaller than this one right here. And they're delicious. At the market, we sell our own uh, organic kimchi with everything made from this garden, and that requires a lot of cabbage, so we have multiple beds of cabbage. Um, I haven't really had many insect problems with the cabbage, so I just keep spreading it around and see where it takes us. We harvested all of our watermelons already, but I cut the plants back, and it looks like they're going to go again, so we're just going to see what's happened over there. Update since last time, this was all weeds before. So now we have all different variety of peppers. Bell peppers organically don't work here unless you have like an enclosed screened room. So we got local varieties I found from some neighbors. They're a bit smaller, but I don't have to spend a thousand dollars to box them in. It just keeps everything outside. And just less work, more harvesting, right? What else is growing on here? In this bed we're growing apio or celery and this is one thing so when you first came here I tried to do a lot of interplanting with things really close together and I quickly found a lot of things outgrow celery so I've kind of give that more of its own area now. We've moved on to that. Uh, let's see what else do we have in this area. Now that I'm, we talked about not having the roof I'm dealing with the wet season so now what I'm doing is trying to uh, pick beds where maybe I'm not going to plant the next couple months and just do heavy mulching on them and try to get me prepared for later in the year and yeah well, So now we're here uh, another local variety of vegetable called chayote uh, This grows on a vine so I have a stick in the middle which I actually now since it's getting bigger need another one It's going to climb up this stick. I have all these strings set up here so it's going to fill this whole area in It'll just have these hanging fruits, a lot of people call it a vegetable, 
Um, it looks just like a pear from the United States, but it is hard. It does not taste like a fruit. It's almost flavorless. What's great about it is it produces so much. You dice it up and you can put it in anything you want and it will just suck up that flavor and be a nice added vegetable. So great local resource, loves the rain, doesn't need to be under a roof and uh, it's coming in good. My first vines died back for the dry season. Now they're coming back again and we're looking forward to lots of chayotes. Since we are now outside and out of the dry season, cauliflower doesn't like being super wet. I did plant some a little bit later and we'll have our fingers crossed. We got some little guys coming in. So far, so good. Um, I feel like my soil's gotten a little bit better. So I don't have any like, with all the rain, we get like fungus or mushrooms and stuff growing in the soil. And uh, we'll keep an eye on these and hopefully get them before anything bad happens and eat them. We have random spots of kale. They might look bad, but that's just because we picked off uh, 150 leaves yesterday to make some kale chips for yours truly behind the camera, Mr. Pete, <laughs> Green Dreams. And coming in, we just recently replanted our cucumbers, so this whole cucumber bed is new. Did have some issues with some bugs, found a nice organic spray that's helped us deal with it. And we'll see what happens from there. Now we're coming into one of my favorite garden fresh vegetables, the broccoli. These are coming in great. I have noticed a little discoloring. It could be from a little bit of over fertilizing or a bit of excessive rain. So we're trying to gauge that as we are trying to save some money to put a roof over the garden. As you guys walk around, I'm sure you're noticing it's pretty large. So it's gonna cost a few a few dollars, a few junior bacon cheeseburgers to throw a roof around this garden. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of stuff we make here, we're making kale chips, we're pretty much all the stuff that we're growing in the garden is coming right into our house. We did originally start with the idea to sell a lot of it, and it's kind of slowed back in terms of what we're selling because we're consuming just about everything and finding ways to make products with it all. Uh, with some successes, you got excess of some things, with some failures, I've had less of others. But at the end of the day, we like eating organic food. The baby is on his way because obviously what he's eating is coming from our wife's organic food diet and we're looking forward to just continuing to make products put all the food on the table and right now we're growing just about everything with the exception of rice which we buy locally from an organic grower and beans which we have not found the perfect uh, supplier yet but we're getting them locally as well and my wife loves guacamole, so we get avocados. But besides that, you know, it, it's coming from here. We got the sweet potatoes, cabbages. We just harvested over 100 cabbages to make kimchi. Uh, we have hot peppers, sweet peppers. We have four varieties of tomatoes. We're trying to get our carry game on. It's coming along slowly. And yeah, things are working good. You know, it's, it's all a test and it's all a trial, but it's working fun here at Pinca La Familia. Well, we want to thank you guys for coming out to the garden from myself, Dan, my wife, Jessica. If you guys are ever in the area, you know, you give us a shout. Uh, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook. Shoot us a message. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and don't forget, pound dirt.